Good morning, Pack 22. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming this early Sunday morning. <laughs> My name is Julie. I am the new Cub Master of Pack 22 Braintree. So I wanted to welcome you all first um, to this lovely ceremony. Uh, just a few housekeeping things before we really get started. Um, first of all, I wanted to acknowledge all of the hard work that Jen Ricciarelli and Mr. Leonard have both made to make this morning possible. So if everyone could give them a big round of applause. In addition, um, we do have our November service project is here today. We have a back table set up for all of the donations that um, people may have brought in for our local families and communities in need. And I just have to say that I'm absolutely blown away and so touched and impressed with the generosity of our pack. I kept increasing the number of items just for the heck of it to make sure that everybody who could bring something could. And all of our, um, all of the little sign-up sheets kept filling up. So thank you so much for all of your generosity, and I know that Father Bills will really appreciate all of our thoughtfulness for the holiday season. So finally, after the ceremony is over, we, we do have um, a table up front with these ladies with some art supplies, so feel free to make some holiday or have a great day cards for the local community, and we will include those with our donations just to make people smile. They don't have to be Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or Thanksgiving cards. They can be anything you wish, um, but we want to make sure that, um, you know, we know that the communities know that we're thinking of them um, in the holiday season. <clears throat> so thank you. Um, just a couple of other things. Um, our, uh, the pack it does have some tickets for an upcoming Providence Bruins game on December 3rd. There are still tickets available. Um, it is not uh, a PAC-22 sanctioned activity. We are not providing transportation or um, the tickets directly, but you have received a link to buy those tickets if you like, and anyone who attends will be able to uh, participate in a color guard right on the ice um, during, before the game. So if that's something that you're interested in um, and you want to take a trip to Providence, certainly um, either follow the link or talk to one of the leaders and make sure that you've done that. Um, and then finally, um, for just an upcoming quick announcement, there's a slight schedule change for the December monthly meeting for the Lions and possibly the Tigers, if anyone is interested. Um, on December, on the first Thursday evening of December, so December... First, <laughs> I believe, December 1st at 6.30, um, the Lions and the Wolves and the Bears, and we are also inviting the Tigers and anyone else who wishes to go on a night hike um, as our monthly meeting um, to do some of our outdoor activities and belt loop um, projects. So at 6.30 at Pond Meadow Park, if you're interested in coming, uh, we'll be all meeting there and uh, taking about a mile hike in the loop, and we uh, want everyone to come by and enjoy. And that will actually be the Lion meeting um, so the line meeting is moved up from Monday the 5th to Thursday the 1st. So I think that's all the housekeeping I had. Um, so now we are ready to get um, the day started. So thank you again all for coming. Again, good morning and welcome. My name is Julie McCurtain. I am the new Cub Master of Braintree Cub Scout Pack 22. And I'm pleased to um, invite you all and welcome you to the observance of the 239th anniversary of the Treaty of Paris of 1783. And Mr. Leonard will be speaking in a few minutes to further um, explain and discuss the importance of the Treaty of Paris. But basically, the Independence Day that we celebrate in, on July 4th just says, America says, we are going to be free. But the Treaty of Paris actually says, we are free and it ended the Revolutionary War, and it allowed the United States to be its own country. So it is just as important, if not more so, than us saying we're going to be free, but also now we are free. So you may now open your programs to follow along with our, uh, our schedule of events.
And these programs have generously been printed and donated again by Mr. Leonard to honor all of our scouts that have participated this year um, in the varying activities and part of the ceremony. So thank you again, and we hope that you enjoy this commemorative um, part of history. Please stand for the posting of the colors. The color guard is going to be manned by the local leaders of PAC-22. Color guard, advance. Color guards, please post the colors. If my bear Ian could step to the front so we can he can lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color guard dismissed. Please keep standing. We will be, um, are we, yes, you can go back. Um, are we going to be singing or listening to the, the, the Star Spangled Banner? <laughs> Please join us for singing the Star Spangled Banner. Your, the words are in your program if you need a refresher. We'll follow that up with God Bless America, which is also in your program. Oh, it's not? I'm sorry. Change of plans, my apologies. Cub Scouts always say, do your best, so I expect at least one mistake every program. So now, without further ado, please help me in welcoming our town council president, Meredith. If you could step to the front, she will like to say a few words and get this program started. Thank you so much for having me this morning. Um, my name is Meredith Berica. I am the town council president and the district five town councilor. And on behalf of the town of Braintree and the Braintree town council, thank you so much for having me this morning. And thank you to the scout leaders and all of our scouts from Scout Pack 22 and everyone, <coughs> excuse me, participating in today's program. I am really delighted to welcome you to the Treaty of Paris of 1783 anniversary observation. So town government in Braintree is a democracy led by and for our residents. And just like our national government, there is an executive branch led by the mayor and a legislative branch, which is the Braintree Town Council. But how do democracies at all levels of the US government come to be? 
How is the town of Braintree connected to the American Revolution and the creation of our democratic system of government? The Declaration of Independence, famously signed by two Braintree natives, John Hancock and John Adams, said we ought to be free and independent. And we celebrate July 4th as Independence Day to remember this. However, it was the military victory in the American Revolution that truly made us independent. And it was the Treaty of Paris of 1783, signed 239 years ago in September, which ended the American Revolution and changed the statement of our independence in 1776 into the reality of our independence in 1783. John Adams of Braintree was the principal negotiator and author of the Treaty of Paris of 1783. He was the first to sign the treaty for the United States on September 3rd, when we officially became an independent democratic country. Today, we honor the Treaty of Paris of 1783, and we also honor the hundreds of thousands of citizens who have worn the US military uniform and given their lives over the centuries to preserve and protect our liberties and to keep the United States of America strong, democratic, and free. Thank you for being here today to mark this occasion. And now I'd like to introduce my colleague, District 1 Town Councilor Julia Flaherty for the invocation. Good morning. Dear Creator, Today, we celebrate the 239th anniversary of the Treaty of Paris of 1783 and the creation of the United States of America as an independent nation. We ask your blessing in memory of the brave men and women of the era of the American Revolution who sacrificed, suffered, fought, and gave their lives so that they and their families could enjoy the blessings of liberty and freedom in their time and so that we can enjoy those blessings today. We ask your blessing also for our veterans who have served in the past to keep our country free, for the men and women of our armed forces who are now serving to protect our nation and our liberties, and also for the children of today who will be the citizens, leaders, and defenders of our free and independent United States of America in the future. Amen. Good morning. Most of you know me, but my name is Jen Ricciarelli, and I am currently the assistant den leader of the Pac-22 Arrow of Light Scouts. Um, I would like to introduce our very special guest, Mr. Patrick J. Leonard, Jr. If you don't know him, Mr. Leonard is a lifelong Braintree resident. He attended Braintree schools and graduated from Braintree High School in 1963. He is also a veteran, having served in the U.S. Army, and an educator. Mr. Leonard was both a teacher and a principal in Latin America, and he was a history teacher and the head of the history department at Randolph High School. He's been very active in the town of Braintree. He has run the Braintree Bicentennial Time Capsule Society's annual time capsule inspection ceremony. He has served as historian of Braintree Post 86 of the American Legion and he is the historian of the Braintree Rotary Club. He has also been a great friend to Cub Scout Pack 22. He has always been very generous in including the Scouts of 22 in the celebrations in the town, and he always makes sure that every Scout who participates is recognized. We're delighted to have him here today, so please give him a warm welcome, Mr. Patrick Leonard. Thank you all very, very much. It is I who am very delighted to be here today. I want to thank Mrs. Ricciarelli for that very kind introduction. 
and thank everyone for being here this morning. You know, the most important gift that you can give to these wonderful children who are with us here this morning is the gift that you are giving them right now. It's the gift that only you can give them, and that is the gift of your time. My wife runs a daycare, and I worked in element in middle schools and high schools and taught in the university. And the time is what the children want, and the time is what you're giving them. So thank you all for doing that. The time is so fleeting, too, when they're this age, when they want you with them. And it's a beautiful time in their lives. I'm very happy to join with the adult leaders and the scouts of Pact 22 as they celebrate the Treaty of Paris of 1783, one of the most important diplomatic documents in the history of the world. And Braintree people were vitally involved in every aspect of the negotiation of that treaty. John Adams is one of the most influential men in all history, and John Hancock also. John Adams helped to create the United States Army, and the banner is behind me. John Adams helped to create the United States Navy twice, and the banner is on our stage. John Adams helped to create the United States Marine Corps twice, and the banner stands on the stage. He also created the United States Marine Corps Band in the Library of Congress. All of that done by a Braintree man. The most famous officer in the United States Navy in the American Revolution was John Paul Jones. His commission was signed by John Hancock from Braintree, who nominated George Washington to be commander of the Continental Army, John Adams from Braintree, who signed General Washington's commission officially making him the commander of the Continental Army, John Hancock from Braintree. Braintree, Braintree, Braintree shows up over and over again in the beginnings of our nation and throughout our nation's history. In my part of this morning's program, I want to discuss the development of the ceremonies honoring the anniversary of the Treaty of Paris of 1783. The ladies who preceded me and the scouts who will follow me will give you the details of what the treaty actually was and its significance in our history. But Mrs. Ricciarelli asked if I would share how this ceremony came to be. Who has seen it develop? Who made the program develop? Who makes it possible since it began in 2013? and who's helping to continue the observance in future years. I wrote the basic plan for this observance on the balcony of a hotel in Antigua, Guatemala in 2013. I lived in Central America for many years. We used to go to Antigua, Guatemala on vacations. I came from the United States to Guatemala for a couple of weeks, had some free time, sat on the balcony, pictured this beautiful town hall in my mind, and thought about this ceremony and wrote down some details. When we came back, I spoke to Mrs. Semino, the secretary of the town council, and she communicated my request to the town council if we could do a ceremony at a town council meeting, and that was done on September 3rd of 2013, the 230th anniversary of the signing of the treaty. That was the first time the ceremony was done. It was done here in this hall, and that bell was used as part of the ceremony. In July of 2014, the next year, I sent an email to Mrs. Maureen Clapp. Anyone who's connected with Cub Scouts or Scouting in Braintree knows Maureen Clapp, a wonderful lady who has done so very, very much for Scouting and for Braintree's children. She was then the Cub Master of Pac-22, and I asked if Pac-22 would consider participating in the event. On July 24th, at 8.44 p.m., I am a historian, so you want the details, I was delighted to receive an email from Mrs. Clapp. The opening line was, the PAC would love to participate in the event. They have been participating in the event ever since. Many groups have been involved in this event over the years. 
the one group that has always been involved in this event is PAC-22 Cub Scouts. And I cannot thank Mrs. Clapp enough, the, the leaders enough, and most of all, the Scouts enough for their participation in this event. The ceremony was originally sponsored by the Braintree Time Capsule Society and the Braintree Historical Society. The event now belongs to Cub Scout PAC-22. There is no question that Mrs. Clapp's enthusiastic and continued support of this event has been vital to the continuance of the program, and I cannot thank her enough for all that she has done. I didn't see Mrs. Clapp here today, but I know she's with us in spirit, and I would appreciate a round of applause for all that she did to start this ceremony. The observance has been done every year since 2013, except 2020 because of the pandemic. When I discussed having Cub Scout PAC 22 take over the ceremony as a regularly scheduled event of the PAC's yearly schedule, I talked to Donna Connors, to Mrs. Joan Piasecki, and Mrs. Jennifer Ricciarelli, and explained to them my reasoning on why it would be nice to have an organization take over the responsibility for this event. And I said, actually, it involves my birthday. They said, really, your birthday? I said, yes, I've had too many of them. And I think it would be better if an organization rather than an individual did this. They all agreed to do that, and I cannot thank them enough for that. To perpetuate this important ceremony, it was decided that the organization would assume the responsibility for doing that. And I would appreciate a round of applause for Mrs. Connors, Mrs. Piasecki and Mrs. Ricciarelli, please. For many years, I coordinated this ceremony, moving tables, chairs, flags, getting set up. You know, it's funny, that bell, I actually bought that bell when I was serving as a lieutenant in Fort Knox, Kentucky around 1970. And I bought it at an antique shop off post, picked it up, put it in the trunk of my car and brought it back put it in my room at the BOQ, it was basic officer quarter is what that is. And uh, it was in, the, um, in my, my quarters there until I moved to another, another place. And the funny thing is, I just picked it up and put it in the trunk. Now I can't pick it up at all. I don't know how that thing got so much heavier over the years, but maybe, maybe it's absorbing you know, water or something out of the air. That bell was uh, on the time capsule float on July 4th, 1976 and it has been used at time capsule ceremonies on July 4th ever since. The ladies of PAC-22, this year led by Ms. Ricciarelli, now do this event, and she is the overall coordinator of the event this year. And I cannot thank her enough for her organization and her advanced planning for this. Because of her, we were able to include the names of all of the scouts who are going to ring this bell this morning, participating in this ceremony. And I'd like a very special round of applause for Jen Ricciarelli. Thank you so very much. The Braintree Historical Society is a very important organization in our town. And between the records stored across the street and here in the town hall, our historical artifacts and documents are in very good hands. I wish to thank the current president of the Braintree Historical Society, Mr. Robert Harris, PhD, for his help in setting up an archive for the Braintree Bicentennial Time Capsule Society at the Gilbert L. Bean Barn and Mary Bean Cunningham Library and Resource Center that makes all of these records and the records of this ceremony available for research in the future. A round of applause for President Bob and the Braintree Historical Society, please. As a history teacher, when I would teach art, Renaissance art, ancient art, modern art, I would say, you know, think not only of the artist, but what about the chemist who made the paint? When you look at a painting that's 500 years old and the colors are brilliant, you say it was a brilliant artist who created that painting. And we know who he is, 
But what about the chemist who created that paint that lasted all that time? Sometimes you don't see the background of something, you only see the foreground. Today you see me here, you'll see other speakers here, you'll see our audience here. But what about the people that create the video of this event? There'll be many audiences for today's program. You are the first. The second audience will be the ones that hear about the ceremony from you. You go to church this morning, you go home, you talk to people on the phone. Uh, oh, this morning we went to the ceremony and my son was in the ceremony. So that's a second audience. A third audience is the one that will see this ceremony on BCAM TV late this month or early in December. And yet another audience is the one that'll see this ceremony many years from now because of the video that BCAM TV will make. And I would like to thank BCAM TV for preserving dozens, scores of events that we have done over many, many years. My thanks to Wes Ray. Wes is the executive director of BCAM TV. He's the man who makes the arrangements to have the technicians come to the town hall and many other places to do these shows and make permanent records for all of us. So I'd like to thank Wes Ray from BCAM. A round for our executive director. As, as, those of you, as those of you who have worked with film and photography know, you need some editing with the raw footage, and the man who does the editing is Jerry Carmack at BCAM. So our photographer today, Christine Patterson, will be making this, and then certain parts will be put together, and the final show will be presented. And the man who is, is a technician and a photographer, but also does the editing, is Jerry Carmack, and I'd like to thank Jerry for his work. In, in that back room, you see the door by the case, the, the case for Braintree's Liberty Bell, is the command post of BCAM. And the man who mans that post every week, and who has done dozens of ceremonies, is William Needham. I've been working with Bill Needham at ceremonies for more than 10 years and have greatly benefited from his technical advice on how to set up the hall and other aspects of preparing and conducting ceremonies. This table has to move. We're getting reflection from this. This will block the, all these little details that are so critical to uh, making a film that's going to preserve an event for a long time have come from Bill Needham. I've seen the results of Bill's work and videos for dozens of events that he has preserved for us over the years. Thank you, Bill, for all that you have done. And an applause for Bill Needham, please. Now, oh, Christine Patterson, the young lady who is in front of us today, whose son is a Cub Scout. I think that's wonderful. He's just starting at Cub Scouts, Christine told me this morning. Christine's worked with me on many events. Uh, and different sites in Braintree and outside of Braintree and various locations and various ceremonies. Christine's a technician who's doing our show today and I want to thank her for the conferences we've had, planning shows, deciding where things are going to go. Christine is a marvelous technical partner in creating programs like this and she is the one representing BCAM today and the young lady in front of me deserves a great round of applause. Thank you, Christine. The BCAM TV team of technicians has preserved dozens of ceremonies and created permanent video records so that you can share them for a long time. The grandchildren of our scouts here today can watch this show a long time from now because of what BCAM will do for all of us. I would ask you for a very special applause, a standing ovation for BCAM TV because they preserve so many things for our town that would be lost if it were not for their technical skill. Could we please stand and give BCAM a round of applause for preserving our history? Thank you. In closing my part of the ceremony today, and I do appreciate the time, Mrs. Ricciarelli, and adult leaders of, of PAC-22, it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, the president 
of the Brantley Town Council, Meredith Verica, who will be speaking to you about a truly great Braintree lady, Mrs. Abigail Adams, wife of our second president, John Adams, and mother of our sixth president, John Quincy Adams. John and Abigail Adams were the first, first couple to live in the White House. George and Martha Washington never lived in the White House. George Washington placed the cornerstone for the White House, but they did not live there. Abigail Adams advocated for the rights of women in an age when the rights were very limited at best. She was both a witness and a participant in some of the most crucial events in our nation's early history and documented all that she had seen and done. She was a better businessman or business person than John and he accepted her advice. One of the beautiful things that you read about the marriage of John and Abigail Adams is that it was not one person dominating the other. It was what it should be, two people sharing their lives, respecting their mutual opinions, getting together to do things, and their getting together to do things helped to create the United States. There is no question that as the wife of John Adams, one of the most important men in government at the time of our nation's birth, that Abigail Adams had a great influence on decisions which were part of the creation of the United States of America. John and Abigail exchanged hundreds of letters over decades, and these letters form an absolutely unique and incredibly important part of the documentation of the establishment of our nation. And remember how those letters were created. You sit at the computer today, you know, 30, 40, 50s, whatever words a minute, a ballpoint pen, which was invented by a person in Weymouth, a ballpoint pen and you write, how did they write then? Bottle of ink and a quill, keep dipping the quill in the ink. Every three or four words, dip it in the ink. Imagine hundreds and hundreds of letters that they wrote. Abigail Adams was born in Weymouth, lived in Braintree for most of her married life. Remember, Braintree was a giant town originally. What is today the city of Quincy? What is today the town of Holbrook, the town of Randolph? We're all Braintree originally. Abigail Adams lived in Braintree, is truly one of the greatest women, not only in the history of our town of Braintree and in our nation, but in world history. My thanks again to Mrs. Jennifer Ricciarelli, Mrs. Donna Connors, and Mrs. Joan Piatecki for the opportunity to speak with you all today, to Mrs. Clapp for her support of this ceremony, and to all of you for being here today, to Mrs. Ricciarelli once again for all of her work as the coordinator of the Treaty of Paris of 1783 observance for 2022, and to the staff of BCAM TV for sharing our program with home viewers and viewers in the future. Town Council President Verica will now read one of the most famous quotes from one of Abigail Adams' letters to John Adams, in which she is encouraging him to remember the ladies, and thus the rights of women, as government of the United States of America was being formed. Thank you all for being here this morning. Enjoy the rest of the program. The best is yet to come. Appreciate the incredible history of the town where you live, the town of Braintree, Massachusetts, and the country of which we are all honored to be citizens, the United States of America. Happy Thanksgiving to all. God bless our Cub Scouts, these young men who are our future. God bless all who work with them and guide them, and you parents, who brought them into the world and now help them as they grow up to guide all of us in the future. And God bless America. Thank you.
Thank you again. It is my um, honor to read this letter from Abigail Adams to her husband John Adams, written in March of 1776, titled Remember the Ladies. I long to hear that you have declared an independency, and by the way, in an, the new code of laws, which I suppose it will be necessary for you to make, I desire you would remember the ladies and be more generous and favorable to them in, than your ancestors. Do not put such unlimited powers into the hands of the husbands. Remember all men would be tyrants if they could. If particular care and attention is not paid to the ladies, we are determined to foment a rebellion and will not hold ourselves bound by any laws in which we have no voice or representation. That your sex are naturally tyrannical is a truth so thoroughly established as to admit of no dispute. But such as of you as wish to be happy, willingly give up the harsh title of master for the more tender and endearing one of friend. Thank you so much to our speakers. And Mr. Leonard, we, can, we are honored to become the stewards of this special ceremony. And PAC-22 will do our best to uh, bring the knowledge and ceremony to the general public for years to come. Jen will be introducing our scout speakers. So Jen, take it away. OK. So now we have some scouts who have volunteered to come up and speak to do some readings. Um, so please give a round of applause to our first reader, Zach Ricciarelli. Welcome to everyone. My name is Zachary Ricciarelli, and I'm a Weeblow Cub Scout from Pac-22 in Braintree. There are two great documents of the independence of United States of America. I'm going to talk to you about the first one, the Declaration of Independence. Just about everyone has heard about the Declaration of Independence. Every 4th of July, we have parades and cookouts to celebrate Independence Day. But did you know that the Declaration of Independence did not make us independent? What it did was tell everyone that we thought we should be, we wanted to, our, we wanted our independence, but Great Britain did not agree. Three great men wrote the Declaration of Independence. One of them was from Braintree. His name was John Adams. Thomas Jefferson of Virginia wrote most of the Declaration of Independence. He became the third president of the United States. President Jefferson had helped from two other men. The first one was Benjamin Franklin. He was born in Boston and lived in Philadelphia. The second man was John Adams from Braintree. Many people wanted him to write the Declaration of Independence, but he suggested that Tom Jefferson of Virginia do it. John Adams helped to write the Declaration of Independence. John Adams became the second president of the United States of America. In 1735, John Adams was born in Braintree. Do you, do, do, you, do you know the name of the first man to sign the Declaration of Independence? The first man to sign the Declaration of Independence was from Braintree too. His name was John Hancock. He, was, he and John Adams were friends. John Hancock was president of the Cent 
Continental Congress. John Hancock became the first governor of Massachusetts. In 1737, John Hancock was born in Braintree. Braintree is the only town in the United States to have two men who signed the Declaration of Independence, John Hancock and John Adams. They signed the Declaration of Independence, but it didn't, did not make us independent. It told everyone around the world that we wanted to be King George III of Great Britain did not agree. He said he still ruled us. We did not agree with him. He sent an army to America to fight us and we had to fight the American Revolution. Thousands of good people gave their lives in the American Revolution to make the United States of America independent an independent country. General George Washington led our army and we won. <clears throat> we, that when we won, we became an independent country at last. John Adams and John Hancock, two great men. We are all proud of our town of Braintree. We all are proud of John Adams and John Hancock, and we all, and all they did for us. They both born, they were both born in Braintree. Both of them were once young boys in Braintree, just like me. My name is Zachary Richarelli, and I'm a young boy from Braintree too. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you all for listening. Next, we have Mason Gallagher doing our second reading. Hello and, hello and welcome to everyone. My name is Mason Gallagher and I and I am an arrow of light, arrow light scout from Cub, Cub Scout Pac 22 in Brantley. I'm going to explain what happened in our nation between July 4th and 1776 and September 3, September 3rd, 1783. The American Revolution began in Massachusetts on April 19th, 1775. The shot heard around the world on Lexington Green was the first shot of a war, which for more than eight years, thousands of men and women died and millions of, millions of dollars of property was destroyed. But then American Revolution would also see the birth of the United States of America and the creation of a great democracy. Eight Americans were killed and 10 were wounded of the Lexington Green. They were the first of thousands of American patriots, both men and women, who would sh shed their blood in the war for our freedom. Although the Declaration of Independence was signed on July 4th, 1776, remember that it did not end the war. We did not become a free and independent nation of July 4th, 1776. The American Revolution went on for more than seven more years. It was a war fought on land at sea between the two of the largest and most powerful empires in history. Our enemy, Great Britain, and our ally, France, close to 7,000 Americans were killed in battle, over 6,000 wounded, and over 20,000 taken prisoner. Over, over 17,000 Americans died of disease, more than half of them as prison, prisoners of war. 
Despite the death, destruction, human suffering, and tragedy, surely no war was ever fought for a more noble cause than the American Revolution. No war ever had a, a more glorious result. The birth of the United States of America, which has helped millions of people all over the world enjoy the blessings of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Let us never forget the man and woman who the American Revolution who fought and died during those eight years when Americans defeated the, the greatest empire in the world, in the world history, to win their freedom. The freedom that we, the freedom that we as Americans enjoy today. That is the end of my presentation. Thanks for you all for all listening. And finally, our third reader today is Grady Northup. Hello and welcome to everyone. My name is Grady Northup and I am a Weebelow Scout from Cub Scout Pack 22 in Braintree. There are two great documents of independence of the United States of America. I'm going to talk to you about the second one, the Peace of Paris in 1783. It was signed 239 years ago. Today we are all here to celebrate that anniversary. Everyone has heard of the Declaration of Independence. Everyone has gone to parades and cookouts and stayed up late to watch fireworks. But how many people have ever heard of the Peace of Paris in, 18, in 1783? What was it? Did you know that our country really has two Independence Days? The first one is the one you all know and that you all celebrate, the 4th of July. But what Zachary said was right. The Declaration of Independence did not make us an independent country. The Declaration of Independence said that we thought that we should be. If the Declaration of Independence did not make us an independent country, then what did? It was the victory over Brit Great Britain in the American Revolution. King George III of Brit Great Britain was forced to finally agree that we were independent. The document that really made us independent was the Treaty of Paris in 1783. The United States of America became an independent country 239 years ago. September 3rd, 18, 1783 is our second Independence Day. What does this have to do with Braintree? It has a lot to do with Braintree. Who did we say wrote the Declaration of Independence? We said it that it was Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and John Adams from Braintree. Do you know who wrote a lot of the Treaty of Paris in 1783? It was John Adams from Braintree, again. John Jay and Benjamin Franklin wrote parts of it too. Who was the first man to sign the Declaration of Independence? Do you remember? The first man to sign the Declaration of Declaration was John Hancock from Braintree. Do you know the name of the first man to sign the Treaty of, Pe the, Treaty of the Peace of Paris in 1783? The man to sign the Treaty of Paris was John Adams from Braintree. Men from Braintree were the first to sign both of the great documents of the independence of the United States of America. John Hancock and John Adams, two great men, the Declaration of Independence and the Treaty of Paris in 1783, two great documents. The first document said that we wanted to be an independent country but King George III, the ruler of the British Empire, did not agree. The second that we said that we were an independent country, and this time King George was forced to admit that we had won the American Revolution, and now he had to agree that we were a free country. We had won our independence by beating the most powerful empire on earth. John Adams was a John Adams, a man from Braintree, helped to write both of the great documents of our independence. 
John Hancock and John Adams, two men from Braintree, were the, were the first to sign both of these great documents for freedom. For the freedom of all, we are, are all proud of our bra town, Braintree. We are all proud of John, John Adams and John Hancock, of all they did for all of us. Both John Adams and John Hancock were born in Braintree. Both of them were once young boys in Braintree just like me. My name is Grady, and I am a young boy from Braintree too. That is the end of my presentation, and thank you all for listening, and happy Second Independence Day. I just wanted to remind our parents that one of the scout scout um, laws is to be brave. So thank you so much for showing our scouts showing our, their bravery for getting up and speaking in public because it's very hard to do, especially when you're not that big. So. Good job, you guys. You all did a wonderful job. At this time, I would like my 13 flag bearers to go into the back hall. Um, Mr. Rob and Miss Jen are going to help you to get lined up. Um, we have a slight schedule change. Um, Patty Whiting had to leave, so Mr. Mike Gersh, our committee chair, he's going to be reading the document and the text for the ringing of the bells. And we will get started with that in just a moment. The Treaty of Paris of 1783 listed the 13 original British colonies in America individually by name. As I announce the name of each former colony and now newly independent state, our Braintree Pac-22 Cub Scouts will ring Braintree's Liberty Bell in honor of each one and place the state's flag on stage. The following is not an exact quote, but is adapted from the original text of the Treaty of Paris of 1783. This is the formal treaty which made the United States of America a free and independent nation, and it is largely the work of Braintree-born John Adams. The Treaty of Peace between the Crown of Great Britain and the United States having been concluded, His Britannic Majesty and the United States of America have appointed David Hartley, member of the Parliament of Great Britain, and the United States on their part appointed John Adams from the town of Braintree in the state of Massachusetts, Benjamin Franklin from the city of Philadelphia in the state of Pennsylvania, and John Jay, Chief Justice of the state of New York. To conclude and sign the treaty and agree upon and confirm the following articles. Article one. His Britannic Majesty acknowledges the said United States to be so free, sovereign, and independent states. New Hampshire. The state flag is carried by Lion Scout Sean McCurtain. Massachusetts Bay, the state flag is carried by Tiger Scout, Dominic Rubino. <laughs> Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, the state flag is carried by Tiger Scout, Lucas Strano. <laughs> Connecticut, the state flag is carried by Bear Scout, James Hooper. New York, 
the state flag is carried by Bear Scout Maya Keneally. New Jersey, the state flag is carried by Bear Scout Benjamin McCurtain. <laughs> Pennsylvania, the state flag is carried by Weeblo Scout Grant Zoe. Delaware, the state flag is carried by Weeblo Scout Grady Northup. The state flag is carried by Arrow of Light Scout, Nicholas Fitzgerald. Virginia, the state flag is carried by Arrow of Light Scout, Coleman Joyce. North Carolina, the state flag is carried by Arrow of Light Scout, Carter Chan. <laughs> South Carolina, the state flag is carried by Arrow of Light Scout, Edward McConville. <laughs> and Georgia, the state flag is carried by Arrow of Light Scout, Mason Gallagher. and that he treats with them as free, sovereign, and independent states, and for himself, his heirs, and successors, relinquishes all claims to the government, propriety, and ter territorial rights of the same and every part thereof. Flag bearers, could you please stand, and we can we have a round of applause for our flag bearers. Thank you, my brave flag bearers. You can all go sit down now. And I'd like to bring up, <laughs> I'd like to bring up Jen Ricciarelli once more for the closing remarks. Okay, thank you, flag bearers. You all did an excellent job. 
On behalf of the Scout Leaders and the Scouts of Cub Scout Pack 22, I would like to thank every person who participated in today's program and everyone who attended. The signing of the Treaty of Paris is one of, if not the most important event in the history of our nation. It's the event that created the United States of America, a free and independent country, and people from Braintree, Massachusetts were central players in this event. As you heard earlier from our readers, we celebrate the anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence every year on July 4th. It is our hope that by holding the comm this commemoration ceremony each year, we can bring awareness of this important event in our nation's history and our town's history to the younger generations of Braintree. Thank you all for participating and attending today. Few more quick thank yous. Thank you to the Town of Braintree and the Mayor's Office for allowing us to use the Cahill Auditorium for this event. Thank you to Ms. Christine Patterson from BCAM for recording today's ceremony. I'd also like to thank Town Council President Meredith Barica and District One Councilor Julia Flaherty for participating. And finally, a very special thank you to Mr. Patrick Leonard, both for creating and producing the beautiful programs that you received and for his help in planning and writing the ceremony. We could not have presented the program without your help. Thank you all once again for being here today. May God bless the men and women of our armed forces, past, present, and future for defending our nation, our liberties, and our freedom. May God guide you all in your future endeavors, and may God bless America. Thank you. Please stand for the benediction, read by Ms. Jennifer Kanyugi. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the blessings of liberty and independence, which we all share in our country and which we celebrated together this morning on the 239th anniversary of the Treaty of Paris of 1783 and our creation as a free nation. We pray that you will grant us your blessings and the blessings of freedom as we each go forward in our individual lives, remembering always the sacrifice and service and the men and women of the past who did so much and gave so much. Generations of Americans who will follow in their footsteps to give us the justice, the opportunities, the benefits, and the joys of liberty which are found in our great nation the United States of America. May God bless them all, and may God bless America. Amen. Would you please join us in singing God Bless America? God bless America. That concludes our ceremony. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Um, feel this is the end of the ceremony. You're free to leave. Um, but as a reminder, if you have donations, they go on the back table. If your scouts would like to make a feel-good card, they're up at the front table. Oh, and we have more programs with anyone who is interested in picking up an extra. And then also, as I said in my email, we are offering um, Pack 22 t-shirts and we do are taking orders for the sizes um, for both children and adults. Actually I see some examples in the back near Ms. Melissa. Yes and so they're available for purchase today right now we do have Square up and running for our pack so if you're interested in grabbing your Scout um, a new Class B or, or pack t-shirt we have them in the back so feel free to do so. 
Um, it's a fun way to show our packed pride when we go out. Thank you.